Today we're going to focus on coordination, strength, balance and also visual cues. This is going to enhance many parts of your brain, but most importantly, we are targeting the cerebellum, which deals with accuracy, balance, and coordination. So let's do a little cerebellum test before our exercise and then after our exercises to see how much we've upregulated the cerebellum. So I want you to bring your left hand out for me, slap down on that left hand and then flip over. And you're gonna do that as fast as you can using your right hand. Good, and then you're gonna do the opposite using your left hand. And notice if there's an indiscrepancy between the two. It's okay if there is, that's normal. Hopefully by the end of the workout, that will have gotten a lot better. So all you need for this workout is one dumbbell, a light one, and two tennis balls or balls that bounce. Exercise number one, grab yourself the tennis ball. You're gonna visually target the tennis ball. Never take your eyes off this tennis ball. You're going to do a squat as you look at the tennis ball. Then as you come out of that squat, you're gonna take the tennis ball from the right hand, swing it under the left leg and catch it with the left hand. Now wherever the ball lands and you catch it is where you then do your next squat looking at. And from there, under the right, Wherever it lands, that's where you do your squat. So we're visually targeting this tennis ball in different ranges of motion with our neck, which is gonna help stimulate, one, our vision, two, our vestibular, because we are looking in different ranges of motion with our neck. There's also coordination involved here. So we are ticking off lots of those different components we were talking about. Plus there's strength here to do a squat. We're gonna do these for about 30 seconds. Good. Ooh, that was a hard one. <laughs> Beautiful, 10 more seconds. Oh. <laughs> Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax there. Beautiful. Exercise number two, you can either use two balls or the dumbbell and a ball. I'm gonna use the dumbbell just because it's a unique kind of shape. I'm gonna place the dumbbell in a forward facing position and the ball about a foot away from the dumbbell. Now I'm gonna stand on my left leg here and I'm going to do, draw a figure of eight. I actually want your big toe to drag along the ground because that's the accuracy part of the cerebellum. Accurately drawing a figure of eight without touching either of the objects. Then you will tap in between the objects. Then you will draw a figure of eight the opposite way and tap. And you're gonna repeat this move 10 times. Around, tap is one. Around, tap is two. Good. You're gonna feel it in this stabilizing leg. It's three. Around, so this accuracy, this coordination, the cerebellum loves. Plus, we're using reflexive stability on the opposite side of our body. Ah, I touched it. <laughs> to do this movement, which has a lot to do with the vestibular and the brain stem as well. Let's go three more, because I've lost count. Oh, I'm terrible, I keep touching things. One, burning bum. Two, three, perfect. Let's swap sides and see if there's a difference between the sides, if it's harder to do that move, if it's not as smooth on the opposite side. Remember the side that was a bit funky when you did this one? Same as down below. Off we go. Circle, tap, circle. Try and do opposite figure of eights, if you can remember which way you started. Good, keep going. I do love this one because it really targets those glutes. Plus you are also mapping the knee in a slightly different variation because to come out here, you have to kind of internally rotate slightly through that knee, which is a unique movement. 
and great for the knee maps. Let's do three more. Damn it, Elise. One, two, three. Perfect, relax there. Exercise number three, grab yourself one dumbbell. This is gonna really target your balance. It's going to be quite difficult to maintain your balance. But remember, it doesn't matter if you become off balance. The whole point is to become slightly off balance so that your vestibular actually knows how to get you back into equilibrium. That's why I want you to have a light weight. You're gonna stand on your left foot for me. You're going to grab the dumbbell in the right hand. As you come down, I want you to take the right foot off and now it never touches the ground again. You swing underneath the left leg, switch hands, switch hands again, and push up on the right hand as a press. Right knee up, left leg stable. Now, you can stop there and just practice that movement if that's hard enough for your balance. If that's really shocking for your balance and you can't do that, you have an option of a wall. Try and balance here, grab the wall, and stand up. If that's easy for you, we're gonna to go a to level harder. We're going under, switching, pressing, and then looking at your little finger now, coming back to the center point, bringing it down. Under, press, little finger, back to that center point. So find two visual targets. One is your little finger, the other I've got in front of me on the floor here. We're gonna go 10 here, 10 reps, so let's go. So you can do, just this part, if that's enough, use a wall or add that extra head tilt, which is going to switch on whoop, that vestibular even more, that balance center and coordination in your cerebellum even more. Oh, my leg is on fire here because of that last one we just did. Let's go five more because I've lost count. <laughs> I'm not good at counting. That's two, three. It's gonna work your feet muscles as well. Oh, they're burning. Four, doesn't matter if it looks weird or unstable. Five, good. Oh, ah. my whole leg's on fire there. Burning foot, ankle, glutes, quads, everything. Balance is the best form of exercise you can ever do. Let's go the other side. Right foot forward, dumbbell goes in the left hand, under, switch, back to the left hand, press up, look up, look back at the target on the ground for balance. Let's go 10. Press, look, back to the target, under, around, press, look. Now, if you need help here, I don't mind you having that foot on the ground at the back, that's okay but we want to try and be off balance. That's gonna open up more stability and control in every muscle group we have in our body. Plus, you are opening up lots of different movement maps because it's slightly off balance, your body has to adjust. And it does that via here, by subconscious movement created by your brain, not by you creating the movement, like a bicep curl. Good, I love those little tweaks that your brain does. Up, look, now my foot's on fire. Three to go, I think. One, Woo. two, I talk too much, that's why I lose counter reps. Three, relax, oh, my foot. If your foot's burning, just give it a stretch out, toes over, nice stretch of those toes. Good, and there. Perfect. Next one, you're gonna need the two tennis balls. All right, you're gonna need two tennis balls here. Now, what I want you to do is place two tennis balls down on the ground. You're going to place your left foot in the center of those two tennis balls. Now, with your right hand, you're gonna pick up the left ball and then throw it against the wall and catch it with that same hand. Then place that back down on the ground, stand up, switch legs like you're running on the spot. Go down with the left hand. Throw and catch. It's a nice up and down quick movement. Place it back down, come up, switch legs. And we continue to do this. Woo. <laughs> we continue to do this move for about 30 seconds. Switch. 
This up and down movement is going to stimulate your saccule, which is a part of your inner ear and your balance center that deals with up and down motion. So if you're someone that struggles with motion sickness, vertigo, being on a boat, you want to be doing more of this kind of movement patterns. Plus the balance, plus the coordination, plus the strength. Good. How are we going? It's a hard one. That up and down movement is quite difficult for some people. If you're finding that a struggle, just keep that back foot on the ground for an extra support. Okay, come back up, switch. Back foot slightly goes on the ground. Damn it. <laughs> Slight foot slowly goes on the ground and switch. Good. Let's keep going. Switch. 10 more seconds. You can go as fast as a, or as slow as you like here. You're using your eyes, obviously, because you've got to follow the ball to catch it. So there's a lot happening here, and it's fun. This is way funner than doing boring squats or lunges. Let's go one more. Yeah, <laughs> good. All right, our last one of the round is an option to move your feet in whichever way feels the most comfortable for you. We're gonna throw two balls against a wall and catch two balls together. Option number one is just a normal stance, okay? And you're going to, as you throw and catch the balls, which takes a lot of coordination, just try and do this for a few seconds to get used to the movement. As you get used to that, you're then gonna slowly go down into a squat, maybe five bounces on the wall, down into a squat. Then I want you to do five bounces in that squat position. Oh. And then you're gonna come back up the wall. One, two, three, four, five. That's option number one. A harder version of that is bringing one foot forward, one foot back, and doing exactly the same thing. Okay? Now you go down into a squat in this strange position. Oh, lost both balls here, then five here, three, four, five, then come back up. And then I would swap at the top my feet. And the last option is single leg, one leg at a time. You choose, one, two, or three, let's go. We're going up and down the wall for five, five or six, five bounces, up the wall. Ooh. Ooh, come on Elise, three, four, five, six, and then swap legs. If you're in that squat, just keep going. This takes more coordination, more balance, and more control than you could ever imagine. Plus a visual input, you have to scan the balls, knowing where they are at all times. It's a slow and controlled move, lots of fun. You can mix it up. I'm going to do squats now. Slow squats. Stick that bottom back. Slide arch through the back to get your butt back even more. No! Come back. If you don't arch that back, which I'm not arching, you're going to be like this. And that's okay. I don't mind. Remember, there's no such thing as bad movement. But if you want pure activation in the glutes, the quads and the hammies, try and slightly arch that back, which you won't actually arch. I'm gonna do one like this and then we're done. Three, four, five, good. That's round one. We're going to go back and do that again if you want to. Otherwise, you can finish here. If you are finishing here, let's test your cerebellum. All right, if you've decided round one's good, I'm done. That's a 10-minute quick kind of workout. Then let's retest your cerebellum and see if we've upregulated that part of the brain. Let's go again. Left hand out, right hand slaps down, flips over. Fast as you can. 
and stop. Let's go the other side. How did you go? Are you faster? Are you quicker? Is your coordination better? Is your accuracy better? Are your joints moving better? That is the power of doing different movement rather than stimulating the brain in the same way as you do every single day, as in going to a certain class that you go to six days a week. Try something different and your brain will give you a different output, which is what we're after. Therefore, in the long run, you're going to have a way better functioning movement and body and posture and flexibility and mindset and focus and memory and I could go on forever. And if you like the way I train, become a member of my website. I put a new work up out every week. It is all about this sort of stuff. It is all about enhancing your brain through unique movement patterns. So jump onto my website, www.elind.com.au and I will see you there.